Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in the last section uh, we talked we had a bunch of videos talking about relations and the very last video talked about relations on a set or in other words a relation that went to and from the same set and in these next couple of videos we're going to be talking about some special classes of those types of relations. Um, we're going to call these uh, special relations equivalence relations and they have a lot of very useful properties. So let alpha be a relation on a set A then alpha is called an equivalence relation on A if and only if it is symmetric, reflexive, and transitive. All right. Now from our previous examples uh, we know that we have um, uh, equals, right? Equals is an equivalence relation on the real numbers or on the integers or on the natural numbers or any set of numbers uh, we use equals as an equivalence relation. Now in general uh, equivalence relations form a natural partition of the set A into what we call equivalence classes. So let's say that little a is, a, is an element of this set A. I'm going to define this equivalence class and we write it this way with these brackets. This is the equivalence class of A and it's defined as all of the elements B such that B is in the set A and A alpha B. Okay. And A alpha B. Now all of the elements in this set are going to have this equivalence relation with each other because of our requirements for what an equivalence relation means. For example, I know that A is going to be in the set because A alpha A because alpha is symmetric. If A alpha B, then B also alpha A because alpha is reflexive. And if B alpha C, then I also have that A alpha C because uh, alpha is transitive. So this is going to be the set of all elements that are related with this equivalence relation alpha to A. And actually I could use any element in here as my representative of the equivalence relation because they're all related to each other in the exact same way. Right. Now there are uh, several different properties for this equivalence relation or sorry for this equivalence class. If we have this equivalence class A, then I know that if A alpha B this is the same thing as saying that the equivalence class generated by A is equal to the equivalence class generated by B. Right? These are going to be the same equivalence class because A and B are both in the equivalence class generated by A. And I can use any representative. That's what this statement is saying is that I can use any representative of the set to define the equivalence class. The second property, if A is an element of the equivalence class generated by B, then that's the same thing as saying the equivalence class generated by A is equal to the equivalence class generated by B. Right? Again, for the same reasons, we know that we can use any element in the equivalence class as a representative. So if A is an element of the equivalence class generated by B, then the equivalence class generated by A is this equivalence class generated by B. They're the same equivalence class. Now if we have A and B are both elements of my set A. This implies that either the equivalence class generated by A intersected with the equivalence class generated by B is equal to the empty set or the equivalence classes are equal. Now what this statement says here is that equivalence classes are either equal or disjoint. So I, if I have an equivalence class generated by one element and it's different from a different equivalence class in any way, then it's completely different. They can't possibly share any elements because any shared elements that they have would kind of close that gap, right? They would create an equality by putting all of the rest of the elements that they're equivalent to into that class. So either these equivalence classes are equal or their intersection is empty, right? They either have all elements in common or they have no elements in common. There's no middle ground here. Now this brings us to four. We can say that the set 
of disjoint equivalence classes partitions A. And what that means is every element of A is going to be in its own equivalence class. Now if I take, oh this is disjoint with a T, if I take all of those equivalence classes that are different from each other it's going to break up A into all these different equivalence classes. Every element will be present and no element will be in more than one of these disjoint partitions. Uh, or disjoint classes. We know that they won't be in more than one from this property 3, right? Either it's in the class or it's not uh, in the intersection. All right, so either it's the same equivalence class or the intersection is empty. And any element can generate its own equivalence class. So we call that a partition of A. We're breaking A into all these different kind of subsets where the intersections are all empty but every element is present in at least or actually in exactly one subset. right? We call that a partition. Now in the next video I'm going to talk about a very special equivalence class called congruence. Um, some of you may have heard the term congruence before. So we're going to define what congruence is, modulo some number, uh, as an equivalence class. And then I'll do some worked examples uh, dealing again with these partitions and with congruence as well. We'll see you there.